Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. This video, we're going to be talking about constants, specifically literal constants. So previously we did a video over constants and the different types. There are literal constants, symbolic constants, and macro constants. So the ones we're talking about are literal constants, with which are literally just values, things that are hard coded in our code. So why exactly do we need an entire video to this? Well, there are actually a lot of different types of constants. Usually most of the time we don't really have to worry about it because it's gonna work automatically, but you should definitely know that these things exist because you're probably gonna run into them in your C++ development. There are also constants for different bases. So for example, there are constants for hexadecimal numbers and octal numbers. It's important to familiarize yourself with these things. So we're gonna go through it and see what we can come up with. Now, before we start, you definitely need to check out the sponsor. If you have any sense at all, <laughs> Embarcadero C++ Builder is the best IDE for C++ development. Why? Well, first off, it has a debugger, it has a user interface developer, so you can do drag and drop components. These things are pixel perfect and they work for different platforms. So one of the huge benefits of this is that you can deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android, and you can build user interfaces for these different platforms to be just right for these platforms. So I'll leave a link for you guys to check it out in the description. Go give it a try. The community edition is free, so you should be able to just go get started. Check it out. Now let's get back to constants. The first type of constants that are very simple, we're not going to spend much time on this, is quoted constants. We have characters, such as a C, and then we have strings, which have double quotes, such as C. <laughs> Now there are three other quoted constants that we haven't talked about in this series, but you might want to know they exist. That is w char underscore t, char 16 underscore t, char 32 underscore t. These are constants used for Unicode. Unicode allows us to create applications that support multiple languages. You definitely want to research those if you're interested. I'd recommend char 32 underscore t. This will allow you to make more universal applications. Most of the stuff we're doing in this series really isn't going to be doing anything with different languages, so we're not going to be covering those, at least not yet. For now, we're just going to be using the basic char and string, which will cover everything we need. Now, when it comes to numbers, there are actually a ton of different data types, as we have learned. So, for example, when we have the value 5, this is an integer, but there are a lot of different integral data types. Sometimes you're going to want to specify what data type you're trying to use. So for example, we could put a U at the end of this to say that this is an unsigned integer. When would you do something like this? Well, for example, you might be using a special keyword called auto like this. And in this case, what's going to happen is it's going to determine the data type of this variable based on the constant value over here, the literal value that we're assigning to it. Now this is actually a C++11 feature, so what you actually have to do when you compile this, you need to say G++ the name of the file, and then put hyphen standard equals C++11, like so. When we compile it works. If you don't put that on there, we're going to get an issue. You can see it says auto type specifier is a C++11 extension. So yeah, definitely make sure you compile with that C++11, but if you guys are in a class for school, make sure this is okay with your professor, because no kidding, I used a C++ feature in one of my C++ classes, <laughs> and I got a zero. <laughs> so I had to go through a really long conversation with the professor about how what I did was fine. He didn't like it, but eventually he ended up giving me credit, but definitely make sure that you are in the okay to use C++11. I think part of the reason is that he just had TAs grading it and they were just compiling it like normal and it wasn't working, so then they just gave me a zero. <laughs> so the way the auto works is that it looks at the constant value and makes that the data type of X. Things are still statically typed, so X still has a data type and we're still restricted to storing that data type in X later on. So just because it has auto doesn't mean we can do something like this. This is still breaking the rules because X is going to be assigned an unsigned integer. That means X is typed to an unsigned integer and we're restricted from putting something like a string in this variable. The different constant types can also come up when it comes to method overloading. So for example, if you create a method which is just a function attached to a class, you can have different versions of this function that gets called differently depending on the data type of the arguments. This is like really specific stuff and probably isn't gonna come up until we talk about method overloading. So if you don't really understand what I'm talking about, don't worry about it now. Just understand that 
there are different data types when it comes to constant values, and it, sometimes it's important to be very specific on what we're trying to do. If not for a technical reason, maybe it's just for clarity for the people reading the code, which is also very important. So not only are we limited to the U for unsigned, but we can also put L for a long. So now this is going to be an unsigned long, and then we can put two L's for unsigned long long. You can also append letters for floating point values. So for example, we might have 5.0. Well, we can append an F to specify, hey, this is a float. If we do nothing, it's a double. And if we do an L, it's a long double. The actual value here is not necessary. So for example, you could have five point, that works just the same, but you will often have stuff after the decimal such as 5.5. Now let's move on to the next section and talk about hexadecimal and octal. 